Hey, everybody. It is Mike Bruce with Life Starts with Food Health Coaching. Um, if you're wondering where I was last week, I wasn't here. I took a day off. <laughs> took, a, took a week off to kind of just relax and, uh, and do other things for the week and um, let everybody uh, focus on the 4th of July and, and hanging with family and friends. Um, I am here today again with Lisa Gula, and I'm excited about this because we've got to spend a little more time together recently um, over the phone and, and uh, emailing. Um, I had Leon before. She is a an EMF specialist out of Brandywine, Brandywine PA. She has uh, over 25 years of experience with, um, with EMF consulting, and um, she is the president of of um, EMF uh, EMF Professional Solutions. She is a building biologist since uh, 2000. She is qualified in so many areas, guys. Uh, air quality, water quality, EMF protection and testing, um, healthy building practices. And that's a cool thing because that's for both new buildings, um, con new construction, old construction. Uh, it runs the gamut there. Um, let's see, what am I missing here, Lee? Um, oh, you are one of the only EMRS uh, specialists Pennsylvania. in Pennsylvania, That's and you were one of the first in the country, were you not? Um, I was in the earliest classes uh, that the Building Biology Institute started back in the 90s. So I bought my first gas meter back in the 90s. <laughs> that is I'm one of the old timers. Yeah, yeah. And and not only that, um, I know you have uh, a background in law. You have a, you have a, a vast background. It's really cool. Um, and your education, you have a BS in environmental resource management, and uh, and then eleven. I didn't I didn't realize this before that you had eleven years in sales and IT, which is really big because yeah. you don't want somebody who's just been just jumped into this. You want somebody who knows what they're doing and knows about about uh, the IT world ahead of time, um, because, for instance, I have all these meters here, uh -huh. but I, I've not been in the in the industry. So, uh, yeah. so, yeah. so Lee, today I think we are talking about not. I think I wrote the <laughs> description, so we definitely are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna um, try. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're talking. It's, like about, it's right after the holiday. We're gonna do our best. I know. I know. I, I told Lee right before we started. I said, "Man." I skipped one week and I like forgot my whole protocol, my whole structure and everything that I normally do. So um, today we are talking about the things that you commonly see in the field uh, and as well as solutions for this, which um, this is super fun for me because just last week uh, you're in Brandywine, PA, opposite side of Pennsylvania. I'm yeah. near Pittsburgh and you had someone that needed some uh, an in-person assessment. And because I have all of the meters already from working with you, uh, you uh, we worked together and I got to go to the person's house and help them test their house, which yes. was such a terrific education. It is. It's like anything. Once when you do it, you get it. You get mm -hmm. it faster. It sinks in. You process it. You know, reading it, not quite the same. Yeah. Trying to do it on your own, not even close. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and And to be able to walk through it with mm -hmm. you. Now, mm -hmm. we would have to, because these are such um, sensitive meters, you would tell us what to do and we'd have to turn off the phones and everything. And, uh -huh. yeah. and that was, that made for fun because, uh, uh, your client and I, um, we were kind of, cause I'd been through it a little bit of it once or twice already. Mm -hmm. Uh, she was, she was asking questions and I'm, I wasn't answering very well, but I was answering some, I'm like, mm -hmm. but we need to make sure we talk to Lee about this. <laughs> yeah. 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 It went well. It went well. Well, good, good. And, so, what are some of the most common things that you come uh, that you see when you're actually on these assessments? So, when I'm out, and most people that do what I do, we look at four primary fields. We look at radio frequency or microwave radiation. That's your wireless products, cell towers, smart meters. Um, we look at electric fields. That's the electricity in the wall. It's the voltage coming up off the wires. We look at magnetic fields. Magnetic fields can be from transmission lines, products, stray current, I'll talk about that. And then dirty electricity, basically harmonics, voltage spikes, mainly from energy saving products, switch mode power supply, I'll, I'll talk about that as well. So I'll start with radio frequency, uh, microwave radiation, that's the big one. They're all important, but 
That one seems to have the most exposures these days, obviously. So the number one thing I see in the house that we really do want to change is having Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. So uh, Wi-Fi, the best option is actually to hardwire it. Um, I think most people know that. And I think they think it can be more difficult than it really is. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's special wire that you use in between the walls. and But literally, you can run it along the baseboards. You can, you know, if you don't have a long way to go. However you need to do it, whether you need to hire a professional to come in and do it, hard wiring is really the best. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, you can actually, uh, whether whether through Amazon or somewhere, I actually, I think I ordered 200 foot or 500 yeah. foot of, of wire. Um, yeah. And I hardwired my gar- all the way out to my garage, yeah. out to my yeah. shed, because I like to spend time in my shed. Yeah. And um, it's nice to have like Netflix playing. So, um, yeah. I and I'll give you some other options too. I can give people options for that in that type of situation, yeah. you know, for a distance. But the second one that is also a good EMF option are Mocha adapters, Mocha, M-O-C-A, and they use the existing cable lines in your house, which are actually shielded. So that's oh, wow. an option. Um, if it's a newer house, you know, you may not have cable jacks, um, so that may not be, you know, good. But But a lot of the older houses have... Mo- you know, cable jacks that you can use Mocha adapters for. And I'm not going to get into the details about how to hook them up. Just, you know, we're going to kind of cover this on a surface level. Um, the next one are power line adapters. Now, Real, real fast, um, yeah. a friend, Lori, she said, why no Wi-Fi? Um, why no Wi-Fi? Yeah. So at the end of this talk, what I had planned to do was talk about some of the health effects and also give you two really good sites for research. Okay. So, Wi-Fi uses radio frequency, um, and it has been determined uh, scientifically that when our bodies are exposed to radio frequency, one of the mechanisms that can start a health negative health consequence is the voltage-gated calcium channels. Mm-hmm. So voltage-gated calcium channels, and we don't know why, but for some reason they open when we're exposed to radio frequency. And then you get an influx of calcium into the cell, um, and it's not just the calcium ions, it's actually the potassium ions, the sodium ions, the whole, a lot of the different ion channels, but calcium being the major one. Yeah. And and so these, the, yeah these are, the calcium gated channel is, is the, um, uh, it's kind of like the, the door that allows the calcium in and out of the cells and exactly. keep the balance just right. Yeah. And, when, and when too much balance, calcium, yeah, I mean, too much inflammation, all the way to, you know, oxidative yeah. stress, double DNA strand, strand breaks. I mean, so I will at the end point to you to uh, two really good resources. One is the bio initiative with RF color charts. We'll cover that. So my goal is to really keep this positive and focus on solutions. Um, and, you know, rather than say, this is why it's bad for you. Yeah. We can do that certainly, but um, most. And I, I will say you know, my. What do I do? Yeah, I, I will say I personally, when we have the Wi-Fi on in our house, which we yeah. very rarely do now, um, mm-hmm. I will start getting agitated and edgy. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. and it, like if I walk into the house and don't know it's on already, uh, my, maybe my wife was on the porch on her yeah. computer for work instead of in the house yeah. on, on landline. You can tell. You... Yeah, I'll get edgy. And I, I, yeah. I stop myself and I go, wait a second, is the Wi-Fi yes. on? And she goes, and when, and when you're aware of it, it's easy to connect the dots. It really is. Yeah. It's about awareness. Be, Why am I feeling this way today? Mm-hmm. You know? um, so, yeah, it's common with awareness to feel it. But that was a question. Thanks for asking. Yeah, thanks, Lori. Um, but yeah. The third one is power line adapters. Now, power line adapters do use the electrical lines in your wall to transfer the Internet signal. It's not an EMF-free solution. However, I do it a little bit differently um, I don't use just any old power line adapter, um, definitely older power line adapters. And you have to respect them. You have to unplug them when you're finished. Mm-hmm. Um, so they are an option. So like what you just said, Mike, for your garage, and I'm glad that you hardwired it. That's the best. But this is another option. If there's electricity out there, you know, you could plug in a power line adapter at the computer, put another one out there and get the signal that way. Um, okay. So my first choice. Um, it's just an option. And I will still take that over Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. 
The fourth choice for Wi-Fi is an eco router. So the eco router, if you go to my affiliates page, yeah, that's my affiliates up. page in general is good because at least you see some of the products I'm recommending. Um, yeah, so the affiliates page right here. Exactly, selling, but recommending. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see the eco router. Keep going. There we go. Yeah. <clears throat> so the eco router is much less radiation. You can read about it. Um, much less pulsing, which is also a biological factor in Wi-Fi. And the newer eco router has a really good option where if no devices are trying to connect, it will actually go into standby mode and you won't have radio frequency radiation. That's terrific. Now, I still don't like Wi-Fi, but for some people, that's the only option because maybe the wife wants to get rid of it and the husband doesn't, or maybe both parents want to get rid of it, but the teenagers don't. So some <laughs> compromise and strike a balance. I would love to buy this for all of my neighbors because- I know. <laughs> Well, are they close to you, Mike? The, um, the neighbor to, on both sides of my neighbor's houses are probably within 30 feet. Okay. Um, and I, I pick up their Wi-Fi signal stronger than my own. And then the back neighbor is, I don't know, 150, 200 foot away. And I still pick up their Wi-Fi signal. Um, yeah. I, I pick up like 10 of them. And they're- Yeah, and, and just because you pick them up, it, it truly doesn't necessarily mean that there's a stronger within your own house. Typically, mm -hmm. the router is still the strongest. Um, but sometimes in that case, um, the other thing you can do, this is a signal tamer. Okay. Uh, it's, it's like a pillowcase. The back is open. That's, you put this over the router and the wires come out the back and then you kind of seal it up. This will also decrease uh, radiation from the router. So this is sometimes handy for people in townhomes when they get along with their neighbor really well. You know, they can buy this. I think this is like 50 some dollars and ask their neighbor if they would mind putting it over their router. Now, especially in a townhouse situation, these routers are super overpowered. So mm -hmm. put this over it, although it will reduce the signal, they're, they should not have a problem. That's and a really good idea. Too much of the signal. You can just, you can open it up a little, you know, just, you can kind of adjust it somewhat. Um, so, they also now make an extra strength signal tamer, and it only allows the signal from the router to go four to eight feet, I believe. So that would be a good option. Let's say if you're sitting in your office and you have the router in the office near you, a lot of people are doing that at home right now, working at home, and you don't need it necessarily to go through the whole house. Mm -hmm. The extra strength signal tamer as a quick, fix. You know, I would prefer it be hardwired, but it is just another option. Yeah. So there, there are a lot of options out there to either get rid of Wi-Fi or reduce the radiation from it. That's really cool. Yeah. And I have a little Faraday cage that, uh, mm -hmm. that I kind of got as a yeah, present. So you have the metal version of that. Yes. Yeah. I kind of like that one because it fits over a lot more things. I've had a lot of clients buy that metal version and the routers are getting so big antennas that they're not fitting. So this is like fits a lot more things. Yeah, yeah. The reductions are the same. They're very close. So. Very cool. So number two, um, and I'm finding less of this, but people are still using cordless phones, not cell phones, but cordless phones. So cordless phones, that's like having a little cell tower right in your house. <laughs> I actually, they're really worse than cell phones because the cell phone, is you know equally bad when you're on it but the cordless phones emit through your whole house 24 7 when you're not even talking on them wow then if you look at my blog i wrote an article about cordless corded phones okay let's find that out. like do you have a cordless phone and you may not even know it really? it's, oh yeah yeah i i remember that one um yeah and i see it it's right there cordless Telephones, you may have one and not even know it. I see this so often. You wouldn't even believe how often I see this. Oh, man. People buy a phone that has a cord. But, in fact, that phone can use Bluetooth, and it's actually emitting just like a corded phone. It just has a cord. The way to avoid that, I give some examples on the blog article about phones you could buy, but you'll see sometimes it'll say Bluetooth on it. That's a dead giveaway. It's emitting. But also, you, you want... To avoid the phone saying DECT, D-E-C-T, anywhere on the phone, anywhere on the box. 
And that, that gives you the indication that it's a cordless telephone. What was that again? D-E-T-C? D-E-C-T. It's a DECT Digital Enhanced Cordless Telephone. D-E-C-T. Okay, I'll throw that up. So D-E-C-T, guys. Yeah, it's Digitally Enhanced Cordless Telephone. And some of those have cords. So anyway, in this day and age, you can still use some of those phone jacks. Just get, even if, it, if you have to get voice over internet protocol telephones, that's fine. Just get a hardwired phone. However, you, do it. you know, obviously we can't all get landlines anymore. Uh, cell phones. Cell phones, there is also a lot you can do. And I think, I'm again, I'm, I'm just going to defer for this call to my blog article. There's an article on my blog about cell phone re radiation, reducing it. Okay. Because self-explanatory so it's all laid out you can read the article um, the main gist of it is turning off antennas that you're not using so if you're using a call using cellular turn off the Wi-Fi turn off mm -hmm. under settings um, that's the main gist of that article but there's a lot of other suggestions as well and you know personally for me and it it blows me away I, it's almost like I'm getting more sensitive to it as I'm healing more and more mm -hmm. um, when I play, uh, when I plug my phone into my car, it's it has to have Bluetooth to to run through the to run through the dash so I can you know hit the forward and the back buttons on my on my podcasts. Yeah. And when I have that running, I'm sure it's a combination of a lot of things, but the just the Bluetooth running with my car on, I end up with a tension headache mm -hmm. that just it's within minutes of having it on, and it doesn't. That's next on my list. That's yeah. next oh. on my list. And it's because also you're sitting in a metal box. I mean, you're mm -hmm. in a metal box. It's just bouncing right list. back at me. Next on my list, number four, pairing a phone in the car and or using Bluetooth. So what people need to understand, when you pair a phone in the car um, one time, or even if you didn't do it, a lot of times people ha haven't done it, but maybe they bought the car used, or maybe they bought a new car that somebody else test drove and paired a phone. It's, it's common for phones to be paired, even if you haven't done it. Mm -hmm. um, once you pair it one time, as soon as you start your car, you are hit with extreme radiation. But, I mean, a very high level, um, sometimes severe, but in between severe and extreme, even if you don't have the phone in the car. And that's what people don't realize I find when I'm out there in the field. They say, but I, I don't really use it, and I don't even bring my phone with me. It doesn't matter. So I'm not advocating that you... Be unsafe you want to use hands-free you can use apple carplay with a usb there's an android version you know you can use speakerphone put it in an air you know a holder um, you can pull over to make a call you can wait to make a call um, but again there there are options you know you can in a lot of the newer cars you just turn off bluetooth via the menu and then you turn it on when you need it when you actually if you do have to make a call um, you know, or you're expecting a call, but there are, you'll find there are a lot of times when you can have it off, you know, unless of course your job dictates otherwise, but for a lot of people, you can make some concessions. Yeah. 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 And um, with, with my car, I'm trying to think there is a way to, to put mine into the audio jack. Um, yeah. yeah. But then it's just a convenience thing there. And I do it, mm -hmm. um, I do it about half the time, but lately I've just left it off completely. Yeah. But um, in the audio jack, then instead of having the safe big screen to hit the buttons on, I have yeah. to like reach up and try to hit my phone yeah. and yeah. that's the problem. So yeah. Um, yeah. I try really hard to yeah. keep. Yeah. The safe. goal is not to have an accident trying <laughs> yeah. to read. <laughs> yeah. So, Even more damaging than Bluetooth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A, a quicker way to go, maybe. <laughs> and that just brings up Bluetooth too. I mean, Bluetooth is in everything. I mean, air cleaners, appliances, thermostats. Man garage door openers i had a house i did there was a bluetooth they got it as a gift it was a bluetooth enabled coffee maker nobody was making coffee it was just plugged in just plugged in it filled the whole kitchen with radio frequency oh, you know wow. waiting in case anybody needed to start coffee on their way home or you know from work or whatever oh, wow. so um I know the appeal of these products, but when people, when I'm in the house and when people actually see the radiation for the first time on a meter, it's pretty compelling because for most of the people listening, you know, without meters, they've never seen the radiation. So mm -hmm. it's easy to kind of forget about it. It's like, it's, is it really even there? Yeah. 
And it is. I mean, there, I always say, and I think I told you this before, there's nothing woo-woo. I need a better word, but there's nothing woo-woo about EMFs. It's all based in physics, and that's why I have meters that can measure it. Yeah. You know, the questionable part has always been, are they harmful? That's been the questionable part, which we'll talk about at the end. Yeah, and, and I think woo-woo is a perfect word for it because people, um, I often talk, talk about the energetic side of health, yeah. um, meaning... Okay. You know, and like energy medicine. Now that yeah. sounds woo woo right there, yeah. right yeah. until science proves it. Yeah. But it's really hard to tell people how it's proven when, you know, mm -hmm. in, in physics and science, they totally believe energy exists. But yeah. in the body, we've been, we've been uh, yeah. uh, told if you believe that you're wrong yeah. just in the last hundred years. Prior to that, yeah. every single person on the planet believed it. So yeah. Yeah. It, it's like we've been lied to somehow and, and we all believed it right away. Yeah. So. And for us, you know, it's such a good thing now that we do have a lot of scientific research, peer-reviewed scientific research, because I find that the people that are the most skeptical do the best with the research. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, it's, it's, they're just, you know, they just want proof. That's yeah. all. And I, I mean, you can't blame them. Um, so but anyway, so those are the big ones for RF. You know, I could talk the whole talk about RF. Yeah. Other sources, cell towers. But those are the ones that I find people are doing to themselves. Um, you know, smart TVs emit unless they're unplugged. Printers emit unless they're unplugged. Mm -hmm. so, uh, gaming machines. A lot of people don't know that. So you wouldn't expect the TV to be emitting, emitting RF because you're not watching it. But yeah. Uh, so I'm going to move on. Any, if there's any questions with RF. No, um, the one thing to, to and I, you might have mentioned this, but in terms of Bluetooth, the, um, yeah. the earbuds. Oh, so I, yeah. We have, I, I have a friend, um, He's outside working all the time if he's home and and mm -hmm. like he just leaves earbuds in at all times playing music or whatever but that's just bluetooth beaming straight to the middle of your head all day into your brain yeah. yeah yeah i did um an assessment recently and uh we wanted to show the husband the radiation coming out of the earpods and um you know people will really try to kind of bargain with you and say well what about this and then something's gonna get me you know and i'm like Literally, they are microwave transmitters at your brain. You know, yeah. they doubly hit because you have the Bluetooth device too, like your phone or whatever yeah. on your body. And honestly, what I say is good luck with that. <laughs> what else do you say? I mean, you have, when you do this for as long as I do, you have so much empirical evidence as well. And you are called into homes with literally, and I kid you not, with tissues on the table and from someone who has called you in that has cancer right where their cell phone was in their pocket or right where their purse was, where the cell phones were, you know, that's what cancer is. And, you know, when you see that over and over and over again, and I will see it much more than the average person will, uh, you, you take the cell phone pretty seriously, you know, at that point, it's like, well, you know, and the reason it's there, I mean, in 2011, microwave radio frequency was classified um, as a class two possible carcinogen. And the impetus for that classification was the increase, slight increase in gliomas, brain tumors from cell phone usage. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's, you know, the National Toxicology Study. Again, th the evidence is there. So yeah. it's just it's like anything else. You know, um, you may not hear it from the FCC who monitors and regulates this radiation. Yeah. There are reasons for that, too, again, beyond this call. But yeah. I, I don't really do have to take your head out of the sand and, you know, get some credible research and, and just use it more intelligently or wisely. Mm -hmm. and it's not saying you can't use it. Just make some changes. Yeah. And um, like you said, we don't have to go into it here, but um, a previous interview I have with Theo, uh, Theo mm -hmm. Lucier, he talks a little bit about um, the agencies in the government that make decisions that are actually. Capture. Um, yeah, captured agents. Yeah, okay. so he discusses that, and it's you know, um, Ivy League schools have done the studies to come up like it's it's like our own institutions have figured out that they are captured. Yeah. So um, and and go look go look back to Theo. I think we we're actually talking about scalar waves and stuff with Theo, which is a very yeah. interesting yeah. topic. Yeah. And uh, so that's worth just. I think it's within the first five minutes we bring that up. So yeah, well, and I think that most um, agencies are. It's hard to avoid. You know. Yeah revolving doors and um and it's money you know mm -hmm. a lot of things are governed by profits yeah yeah 
Okay. But, but yeah, so, let's, let's move on then. Let's move on. So let's get rid of RF. Now I'm going to move on to electric fields because I want to cover this because everybody, we take for granted electricity just the way I think that young people take for granted wireless today because we grew up with it, mm -hmm. with wireless. Electric fields, um, say from the wirings in the wall or from a product like a computer, anything plugged in, they emanate the electric field six to eight feet from that source. So in a typical bedroom, you know, depending on how large the bedroom is, you know, you've got four walls, they all have wiring in them these days. So electric fields are going to come into that room six to eight feet, which in most bedrooms, that's most of the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Dirty electricity also rides on that electric field. We'll talk about that later. So that is also coming into the room. So one of the best things you can do in the bedroom is actually unplug everything in the bedroom six to eight feet away from the bed. That will negate any fields, electric fields coming off that product or the cord for that product. And then if you can't unplug something, then consider moving it as far away as you can. So, I mean, in some bedrooms, eight feet, it may not be possible. That alone will lower your body voltage when you're sleeping substantially. Mm -hmm. um, there's a blog article I wrote. It's called What is on the Other Side of the Wall? And the reason I wrote that is when you are unplugging these products in the bedroom or moving them, you have to understand that you have to do the same. Let's say your headboard is on a wall, and on the other side of that wall from your headboard, there's a lamp plugged in. That's the same thing. That mm -hmm. has to be unplugged as well. So that counts in that six to eight feet, even though it's not exactly in your room. So and that was something we brought up at the consultant, as at the uh, the consult with uh, with your client out here was, uh, she mentioned that on the other side of one of the walls was a radiator, uh, an yeah. electric radiator. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, yeah, that's, that matters. That matters a lot. It does, it does matter. So, and it, you know, again, you know, from there, basically, we can turn off breakers. By turning off the breakers, now we're turning off the hot wires in that wall to reduce uh, body voltage. So, again, that's something that's usually done uh, if you hire someone. Um, you can do it yourself, too. It's a, it's a little confusing to do body voltage because you can have field cancellation effects. Um, so we take that to another level. You know, we do more than unplug. Um, but that's the main one for electric. Yeah. And magnetic fields. Um, so so magnetic. before you move on from the body yeah. voltage, so, so I actually just got my body voltage meter the other day, and it's so cool. Um, Isn't it cool? I, it's I so know. fun, and and um, this is something we'll have to talk about after the call or, or yeah. another time. Yeah, I'll get you. But, uh, yeah, start on that. but I was really happy to see that my grounding mat on my bed is actually taking me close to zero. So, it will. It will. Yeah. Now, that does not mean that the electric fields in the room aren't going through the body first. Yeah. I mean, you have to think. You have sources. You have fans. That's an electric source above you. So mm -hmm. it still shows zero on, on the grounding mat because it has a place to dissipate. It has a, can go to ground. But it, it isn't that it's not necessarily going through you. And, okay. you know, we can expand upon that, you know, at, at another point. But, um yeah. So, it, it, yeah. So it's just fun to. Oh, and um, I had my Earth Runners on, which are, mm -hmm. are grounded shoes, and I have mm -hmm. another pair of shoes that have a band called Earthy. And um, yeah. so I went outside and tested my <laughs> tested both of those. So yeah. like the Earthy pads sit like right right before the heel of the foot. So mm -hmm. I actually got up on my toes to see if I was grounded, so they weren't touching, and I was yeah. no longer grounded. And then I put my yeah. my. It's that that's really good to see. They're like these. Little twenty dollars yeah. straps I did not expect to actually work, and yeah. they work. So that's yeah. fun. Yeah, and that's what's good about awareness. You know, there's a lot of people who are doing good things. Yeah. So you know, a lot of people who are increasing it, and others who are trying to decrease it. So. Yeah. So that's fun. All right. So magnetic fields. Um, most people know magnetic fields from the high transmission towers, the big guys, street wires. Um, for EMFs, electromagnetic radiation, those are the two that I really can't do anything about. Um, street wire, magnetic fields, transmission lines. You know, at that point, there's nothing practical that can be done except distance. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that. Uh, again, you want to kind of avoid that before you purchase a house. You want to have that checked out. Yeah. Um, but what's really interesting about magnetic fields 
a lot of people think, okay, there's no street wires, there's no transmission lines, you know, I'm good. Not necessarily. What I find just with products, so products alone, you know, I, I still find myself saying, oh my God, there are quite a few that we, we try to stay b- below one milligauss. That's the goal. And I like to be even lower, but um, there are some products that emit over 2,000 milligauss, 2,000 milli- milligauss. And a lot of times these products are right next to a bed. Yeah. It can be an air cleaner. It can be a fan, uh, heaters, uh, sound machines. Uh, some LED clocks can be really high, maybe not 2,000 milligauss. If they have transformers, they can be really high. Then the other problem I see is sometimes, you know, any big motor will typically have a high magnetic field. So like an HVAC system, mm-hmm. washers and dryers, um, air conditioning compressors, you know, where the wires come in. And so wherever beds are, and, and even an electric meter, you know, forget about the smart part of the meter, but just the electric meter itself, even the old ones, high magnetic fields. So you really almost need to go to every bedroom and look again, what is on the other side of the wall? You know, is that bed backing up to a fridge on the other side? Mm-hmm. Or is the HVAC next to that, you know, room? Um, and I see it all the time, especially like in a smaller house where it's going to be more common because you have less space to put some of the utilities. Yeah. So that's something I find a lot. And then the last one is something I also find a lot. And most people will never find it, even if you have a gauss meter, because it is a little bit more complicated. And that is stray current. So it could be plumbing current, uh, cable line current, um, any type of basically stray current. And I also find wiring errors. So one thing I had you look for in my client's house, you can turn on a simple light switch and you can get a huge magnetic field in that room and even in adjoining rooms. I was really surprised by that. That was yeah. very interesting. Yeah. Um, and I, we were essentially using me as a, an antenna, weren't we? No, no. I just had to turn you. I had you turn switches on and you were just staying farther from the actual switch itself. Okay. Yeah. So get to the switch, the conductors separate a little and you'll get a field. So I was taking you out of that field, having you turn the lights on, uh, switches on to see if there was an increase. Okay. And in, in homes, I find it, it's so prevalent. It's almost every other home. Yeah. But more that I find wiring errors. In public homes that have public water, I find it well over 60% of the time. Wow. Wow. You know, those, these are fixable. These things are fixable. But it is one of the compelling reasons to actually hire an expert because you, you won't know how to find these. I mean, and I always tell people, you hire experts for everything. Like, you know, really, like, why would you not do this? And I I appreciate getting meters and and learning about it because I think the more you know, you know, the more you understand when, you know. But it's like anything else. I mean, for EMFs especially, I don't believe you can read enough or watch enough videos or, I mean, to do all of these fails yourself. I mean. It's constantly changing. And it is constantly changing. And there's more products coming out. And, you know, um, so... Yeah, so that's magnetic fields. Get rid of that guy. And then one more, and then I'll take some, we can take questions and then talk about the research. But yeah. dirty electricity, dirty electricity, basically just harmonics. Um, you know, frequencies other than 60 hertz, basically, uh, energy saving products, things that change the power, either increase it or decrease it in some way, like and- an inverter. Dirty electricity, you're talking in the actual power lines itself. Correct. Okay, and yeah. In the power lines itself, but it's twofold. So it can be on your electric lines, and it will be. There it really is no clean power anymore. It comes into your house dirty. But also point sources. So let's take a, a product that's dirty. Uh, one product that's really dirty is a dimmable salt lamp. So because I go into homes where people are really into health and different things, you know, I see a lot of salt lamps. I have no problem with them. But I do if they're dimmable. Dimmers are very, very dirty. They're decreasing the power, and that's one of the criteria that will, you know, emit dirty electricity. So uh, I find diffusers to be mostly all dirty, uh, and I'm not a health conscious. I'm not saying don't diffuse, but I, you know, do it a little differently. Um, chargers, all chargers are the dirtiest things ever. So cell phone chargers, and then how many people do you see charged right next to their bed? Yeah. You know, Remember, it's going to come off the charger itself as a point source six to eight feet. 
But when you plug that charger in, it will pollute that entire phase in your house. So you have two phases coming in, phase A, phase B. Half your house is wired to A, half your house is wired to B. So, you know, it's not just as simple as just charging in another room. I, I recommend that. But you really want to unplug these, these chargers when you're done. Just stop the dirty electricity. Yeah. Um, and then I tell people whenever you can, and it's getting harder, but whenever you can buy an analog product. So if you go to Amazon or wherever you buy a product, if you precede the word of the product with the word analog, like analog air cleaner, you know, by analog, I mean an old fashioned dial. So you turn it on, you turn it up, you turn it off, no led lights, no electronic controls, just the old, it'll be clean you know, as long as they don't have the other components in it. It's one of the reasons I still like the Austin Air air cleaners, because I'll have the old-fashioned dial. And people are so enamored with a lot of the new air cleaners coming on the market. You know, they've got Bluetooth, you know, which you have to turn off, and if you don't know to, you won't. Um, they're all using LED lights, I mean, saunas. I mean, the list of dirty products just, and it, it goes hand-in-hand hand with the uh, electronics, too. Yeah. It's like the list of clean products is, is uh, you could write it on a little sticky note like this. I know. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it's very true. And it does make a difference. So dirty electricity just makes you feel how you did in the car. It's um, really hard on your nervous system. So especially people that have neurological problems like Parkinson's MS, really, really hard on, on them. Hmm. Um, and diabetes, like we would call uh, dirty electricity diabetes 3. Because it is such a stress on your body, it can raise your cortisol. Diabetics don't do as well in dirty electricity environments either. They just don't really know it. Mm -hmm. um, so again, connecting those dots. Wow, I didn't. So I didn't realize that about diabetes, but that makes all the sense in the world. It's um, it's affecting. I mean, anytime there's energy involved, it's uh, negative things are yeah. happening if it's if it's the wrong energy. And, yeah. uh, the pancreas and I'm really fussy about products in my house. I mean, I won't use any gym equipment like in my house that, that you plug in. Um, because for me, if it's going to do something for my health, it can't do anything bad either. Because yeah. they're all treadmills, all everything, you know. And I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad that has one. You know, I'm just saying, for me especially, um, I, I have a treadmill that's a manual one, um, a decent manual one. Um, or I go outside, you know, I have an area in the back of my yard that I call the gym and it's got like a cool clothesline. That's my, you know, pull up bar. And I have this wooden swing and, you know, I do all kinds of arm exercises on that. And I've got steps. That's my stepper. Um, I do sprints. I mean, literally you can make this stuff work if you're just a little creative and you know the reason, compelling reason to do it. You know? Exactly. Yeah. And, and it's just, um, same with me. I mean, you're, you're 25 years in or more to a health mm -hmm. journey. Um, yeah. I'm like 10 years in. And yeah. the things that, that uh, people just starting out or people that are a couple years in, they look at me mm -hmm. and they're like, you're nuts. Why would I, why would I go that far? And yeah. um, it's just every step along the way, you're like, well, I've done this. And it made such a massive difference. And that's the thing. The time. proof. Yeah, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, when you feel better or when you see results, like anything, you, you just it fuels it. You just want to do more of it. Yeah. And uh, we have a question from uh, uh, Gina Lee. What about Hashimoto's? Um, how do these things affect that? Mm -hmm. So for the thyroid too, you know, there, anything that affects adrenals, thyroids, anything that's a stress on the body, um, there's some research even with the cell phone instead of putting it here. You know, people are holding it here. You have your antennas down there. So um, why don't, to answer that question, why don't we go right into some of this research? Sure. And the reason I'm saying that is if um, you go to the EMF portal, P-O-R-T-A-L, it is a searchable database with, uh, what, 31,000, Mike, 500? Yeah, 31,580. Almost 7,000, you know, scientific studies. And you can actually put in... Um, anything you want into the search engine, like Hashimoto's, and then pull up all the pertinent documents regarding EMFs and that um, question. So, you know, seizures, you can put any of the fields in there, you know, like magnetic, and read about those. I This is actually my favorite database um, because 
I'm not an expert on Hashimoto's and I, I know I've heard different things about it regarding EMFs and this can empower people to kind of go out and see what's going on, you know, from a professional standpoint. Yeah. And right there, there's 33, 33. Oh, did you put it in there? Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in multiple languages too. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I do love the EMF portal. And then the other one, Mike, is the Bioinitiative Report, which most people have heard about. Um, the report itself is very lengthy. Even the summary is, is quite a lot of reading. But what I do love about the Bioinitiative is on the left uh, menu, the RF color charts, RF color charts. So the RF color charts, basically, um, they're wonderful. I mean, it's a compilation of all the uh, scientific research for radio frequency. And they've actually organized it even by organ system. That's what the different colors are there. Yeah. So you print out. Now, of course, you'd have to have some measurements, either from your meter or, you know, hiring somebody. But, I mean, it does not get more compelling than that. And you'll see off to the right, they list the year of that particular research and also the person who did the research. Yeah, that's incredible. They, yeah, they so really incredible. are. Disrupted calcium metabolism, right there. We've known yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. That that's the. Cal I, I'm assuming it's calcium gated channel, or well, no, calcium. Yeah, likely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and again, you could actually pull up that research. But, um, that's really incredible. Is those RF color charts because RF, you know, these days it's ubiquitous. Not the only one. You know, they're all important. And if I make one point on the call, it's like they're all important, including this electric field that you sleep in. It's. Mm -hmm. People have heard about 5G, they've heard about smart meters, and I find a lot of people are so focused on that, and I get it. But, you know, being in the field, doing this for as long as I have, you know, they're all important. It's everyone is a, a spoke in the wheel, you know, for health. And when, you know, you get to that point, you, you need to look at all of them, reduce all of them. And, yeah. And, Just me uh, personally. So, like, this computer only comes on whenever I'm using it because mm -hmm. I, um, my, my, dirty electric meter, uh, when this is turned off after working with you, it's down around 45 or 55 now when no, I have a computer on. Yeah, like that's way, remember I was at like 15, 16, 1800. Um, yeah. This one, when the computer's on, jumps mm -hmm. up to 870 again. Um, yeah. And I stand in front of it for an hour, or two, yeah. three hours sometimes. And, that, and electronics, I mean, there's only so much you can do. I mean, we talked about the chokes and the fair beads. Um, and they they help. I mean, they help. So you can make a lot of you know shielded cords on the back. You can get shielded cords for the monitors, for the printers. The, again, all things I kind of cover. Mm -hmm. You can take this to a pretty high level as far as making your office pretty clean. At least yeah. at, in the in the office, you know, corporate setting, it's going to be tougher. But there there's so many things you can do with just a little bit of. You know, and I'm not saying they're all real expensive either. You know, like shielded cords, maybe six dollars a piece. Yeah, um, yeah, and and that's the beautiful thing about it, because um, uh, some of the some of the um, dirty electric meter or dirty electric filters and stuff they start getting expensive. Um, yeah. But for me, it's it's I just have a little more calm when I walk into my house. Yeah. There's a little yeah. less hitting yeah. me. Um, I would have loved to try. I should, what I should do some days, unplug everything, turn all the Wi-Fi on, do all that stuff. And then <laughs> go back to how it used to be. It, it's been yeah. incremental. You're just like, don't do it, Mike. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Not for long. Because yeah. it's yeah. been incremental for me. And, um, well, you know, we've been doing, like in our house, we haven't slept with electricity, you know, for 20 years. Yeah. We never had Wi-Fi. We've never had any of this. And when I'm at home for four hours, five hours, you know, I feel it. I mean, I truly do feel it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I will just come home and I start feeling wired. I mean, just wired. And it's not, you know, it's not in my head. It's just I'm, I'm ramped up from all the electricity and the, you know, power and the Wi-Fi. And, and then when I come home, you know, I'll be in the house about an hour and I start feeling like myself again. It's mm -hmm. like I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And that's for most people, you know, you can't, when you walk out the door, you know, pretty much these days, most bets are all off, you know, but you can still control your house to a very high degree. With uh, just for years, ever since I kind of found, found my way in health, people, especially family members have always said, what's the point? You can't control this or that. You live right next yeah. to a coal fire, a nuclear power plant. 
Yeah. And I tell them, okay, but I can I can correct these 14 other things. Yeah. Um, so yeah. why wouldn't I? Why, why wouldn't yeah. I want to feel just a little bit better if I just keep doing these little things? Um, yeah. You do you yeah. change one thing a month. At the yeah. end of the year, you are a different person. Yeah. So um, yeah, but, you know, people that are of that mentality sometimes, you know, there's probably nothing you can say. Um, they tend to also be the people that, you know, throw caution to the wind in a lot of yeah. areas that we would not do, you know, yeah. diet and all kinds of things, you know, so you, do, you know, what I tell people, I get a lot of like parents who say, you know, what am I going to do with my teenagers? You know, they've grown up with this, blah, 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 blah. And I say, you know, you, the only thing you can do, especially, you know, as a mom, because I get a lot of moms is you plant the seed and you continue to plant those seeds because yeah. when you plant the seed and create awareness for your kids, you know, they're not going to listen to mom. It's mom telling me mom worries about everything. But, you know, when you plant that seed, you are creating awareness. And then they may see an article or somebody else may say something that they'll actually hear and process because you planted that seed. So I just tell them, don't stop. You know, keep planting seeds. You know, show them articles once in a while. Um, and, and sometimes maybe that's the best you can do. And yeah. for other people you talk to, too. You know, you create awareness and you're done. Yeah. And here's the other thing, though, is um, for parents who think they could, their children would never let them do this. Um, here's the hard line. You're a parent. They aren't. I, um, I, 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 and I don't While have you're under my roof. I know, right? <laughs> like, there was no such thing as decisions for children up until, yeah. up until recently. So that That's always what I got. Yeah. When I was young, when you're under my roof, yeah. when I was young, my dad was really like into saving electricity and everything. Every time I left a room, I mean, it was, I was conditioned to turn off the light. Yeah. Well, did my dad, my dad know there, if we turned off the circuit, we could have really saved money. <laughs> I didn't know that. But anyway, um, I would turn off the light. When I got my first job, um, I would go to the copy room and every time I left, I would just turn off the light. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny, I, I couldn't, it took me a while to stop because I was so conditioned, you know, but so again, when, you know, and I was in his house, I had his rules, you know, my mom yeah. it was much easier, but he, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the arguments I use for people, um, it's not arguments, just truth for mm -hmm. people who are like, well, my child's only eating one meal a day at, at home, so I can't mm -hmm. control the other two. So what's the point? It's like, yeah. well, you're changing one third of yeah. what goes in their body. One third. Exactly. So exactly. with with fixing and and adjusting the EMF and Wi-Fi and, and RF mm -hmm. and magnetic mm -hmm. fields they get, that's yeah. around 12 hours a day that child's in your house. Oh, yeah. That is one half of their life that is not <laughs> Especially if you can do this when they're sleeping, you know, yeah. that's the most important time. And that's hopefully when you're going to get a lot less pushback too. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Like who cares if the Wi-Fi is off when you're sleeping? <laughs> no. um, I and mean, we can get it back on if they wake up in the middle of the night. And also um, I'll say one more thing too. There, there's a couple of books I recommend uh, on my resources page. You don't have to, I didn't tell you to pull that up, Mike, but um, one of them is reset your child's brain. It's all about screen time. It's not so much about EMS, but about screen time. It's a really, really good book. And that's something I think everybody should read, whether whether or not you have kids. Um, what's that one right here? You said um, Reset Your Child's Brain. Yeah, Reset Your Child's Brain. That book is just phenomenal. That book actually changed my life a little bit because my whole setting was low EMF. But um, I made even more changes after I read that book. You know, I, I don't spend a lot of time on Facebook. I don't spend a lot of time on the computer. I mean, I had it previously, but I, I took it down even more after reading that book. Yeah. Um, I know my the last year or so for me, um, I've really taken, taken an easy approach to Facebook. I don't do a lot of anything on social media, but what I do is these videos. And I yeah. will respond to yeah. people who, who reach out through these videos, and that's about it. Yeah, um, yeah. I do as much hands off as I can with social media. And I'm telling you, my brain has improved. Yeah, um, I, so yeah I, I just really I never had a big Facebook page. You know, those older people don't. But um, after that book, I mean, I literally politely unfriended like 60 people, letting them yeah. know I just want to decrease my computer time. You know, nothing personal. Yeah. But now, I, you know, I just I have a couple of people with the too big of posters. You know, I just um I don't follow them. Um, and I try to every once in a while just because I don't want to miss anything important. I feel guilty, you know, I don't want to hurt their feelings. But 
you know, I just, I've changed. It's like, um, there are a million and one things I would rather do than sit in front of my computer. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And- it is about the last thing. And I, it's not typical today. I mean, it's like a library you can go in there and read. I get it. But for me, um, I just want to be outside. I want to be, yeah. like, I want to be anything, but sitting in front of electronics. Yeah. And, and I love that you bunch yourself into the category of older people because uh, you've told me your age before and I'm just, I'm astounded that like, I mean, you are so young and vibrant and mm-hmm. I would, I would have never guessed it in a million years, you know, like uh, it just, and yeah. it's just proof to me when I have yeah. people on like you or, um, mm-hmm. or people in other health fields and they just, yeah. they look 20 years younger than they, than they should, mm-hmm. you know, based yeah. on what everybody else looks like. Yeah. Um, I yeah. love it. I love yeah. it. I always tell people too, you know, I haven't slept in electricity for 20 years. That I, it, you know, it, It's a spoke in the wheel, you know. Yeah. Genes are important, but, um, you know, you, and I never feel as old as I am, too. And I know a lot of people feel that way. Like, you know, I believe I'm whatever. But I, comparatively speaking, I see it. You know, I see that I have a lot more energy. Um, you know, I, I'm not on any medications, knock on wood, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, things are good. <laughs> yeah. Heck and yeah. hopefully it will. Stay that way. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Um, is there anything else we want to hit on before we uh, before we go? And I, I also do want to thank uh, uh, Gina. Lee. Thank you for for asking that question because I always like when yeah. someone asks when someone reaches out and asks. Yeah. Um, uh, just my website, you know, emfprofessional.com. dot com. Mm-hmm. Uh, Facebook is also EMF Professional Solutions, and I do I do try to post you know information on Facebook on a pretty regular basis. You know any research or articles or something I come across. Um, I have also a store, um, my shop from my website. I don't sell a lot of products. I sell just a handful, uh, whole house water filters, uh, to take out fluoride, chlorine. I find that important. Mm-hmm. Uh, dirty electricity filters. Um, d- just a couple things. I'm affiliate for more people like sleep switches and stuff. Um, I'm just getting ready to sign on with a company for a RF canopy. Um, from Europe. Oh, nice. Uh, attenuation is a little better, so that's coming soon, again, as an affiliate. Uh, and I do tell people, the, the affiliate products, they're not just up there. I mean, there's a lot of research that goes into that to choose a product. It's not like, oh, here's something I could sell. Yeah. Um, you know, so. Uh, yeah, and you are very choosy. You're very picky with your things, and I appreciate that because anytime I've brought a product uh, product up to you, and you yeah. have told me, I don't really like that one, Mike. And it's something I thought I researched so well. Yeah. You gave me the exact reasons why. And yeah, I'm also very conservative with my shielding. Um, to me, it's important to me to keep the place, the room or the space as natural as possible um, and still shield. You know, So to me, it's not always just about reducing RF. I mean, it is, but there's a forest to see through the trees as well. You know. Or there's a benefit to having some sunshine come in, you know, yeah. using window film, you know, in a bedroom, having the sun come in will kill dust mites. So there, sometimes there's a better way for me to do it so I can keep some of the natural, you know, energy in the room. Um, and sometimes there isn't. I mean, it depends. If you're in the city, I mean. That's hard. Yeah. It's hard. It's a lot harder. But, um, yeah, I just find, again, that people just get so caught up in the shielding part of it that it's like it reminds me of the energy crisis when i was younger like the buildings were losing too much energy so okay let's the windows no longer are open everything is you know and you have indoor air quality issues and i find you know that that's what seems to be happening with a lot of this shielding as well mm-hmm. everything is done to keep out the field and, and when you say shielding you're talking there are there are um paints that you can paint your wall. There's mm-hmm. there's meshes that you can put in between. Yeah. There's um yeah. the canopy you're mentioning, which goes yeah. above and below the bed. Yeah. And I mean, primarily like, for for radio frequencies. Yeah. So and then shielded clothing, which I don't clothing. remember if it was you that mentioned it or somebody else that it actually causes higher like higher body voltage on occasion. Um, it just depends. I mean, shielded clothing is going to have metals in it. I mean, mm-hmm. that's how it works. It reflects the field off of you. So sometimes I think it depends more on the person. Like, are you more sensitive to electric fields? 
low frequency or are you more sensitive to RF? Um, there, you know, it's for me, it's 50, 50, you know, I'm not yeah. wear clothes and I'm not a hundred percent of the time saying wear clothes. Some people are, um, it's like anything else, you know, it, there's no magic bullets where unequivocally you can say, you know what, this is going to work for everybody. The magic bullet, you know, if there is one, it's reducing the fields. Yeah. You know, that's what will work for everybody at, to some level, getting rid of the EMR. Yeah. They're eliminating it when you can. And I agree with that. Yeah. And I, I'm with, even with all my love for all these big expensive biohacks and all these things, like I have a PMF, Matt, that's coming today. I can't wait to get on there, um, but I'm renting it because I cannot afford that right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But I'm renting it so we can try it out at the doctor's office that I work for and try it on all my family members that have acute pain that it just like yeah. has ruined their lives. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, and, and they're not the type of people who are willing to make changes in their life, but they're willing to have a magic pill. Exactly. And exactly. so I'm willing to spend the money um, to potentially find the thing that helps a family member. So, um, yeah. Yeah. but, but yeah, even with all those things out there, I know there's nothing like just sitting in the sunshine with your hair on the ground. I know. So I would agree with that. I yeah. would agree. Well, sometimes you have to watch where you're sitting because we have <laughs> you know, a straight coat in the ground, but for the most part, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the sun for me, it just, it recharges my battery. You know? Me too. Me yeah. too. There's nothing yeah. like it. So I know. I know. Well, Lee, I think we really covered some good stuff again today, and I'm really grateful for that. Um, the yeah. previous episode we did, uh, I tried to edit some stuff, and it's just not back up. I don't know how to get that fixed yet. So okay. what will probably happen is they'll both end up being podcast as I take this mm -hmm. content and move it over. So um, yeah. I'm excited to have multiple podcasts of you in the future. So yeah, anytime. anytime. Yeah, I, love, just, I would love to. Yeah, you're great information. Great information. Thank you for having me again. Thank you. And, thank uh, you so Mike, do you want to let them know about the, the Pittsburgh area? Oh, thank you. Yeah. So um, anybody that's in and around the Pittsburgh area, um, I'm a little northwest of Pittsburgh in Beaver County. Um, but if anybody wants to consult with Lee and if they would like to have an assessment done on their house, um, we can team uh, tag team. Can work together. Yeah. yeah. So we can have me come to the house. And, uh, and he'll be on the phone with us and, and walking us through everything. If you're in the Brandywine PA area, um, mm -hmm. in and around there, how many hours around do you go? So yeah, I was too. I've been kind of reducing it to an hour yeah. because I'm so busy, but, um, it's actually, I'm about an hour West of Philadelphia. Um, okay. and it's West of Downingtown. Um, so, but yeah, it's, uh, we, we can do that. I mean, and the thing is you've got, good meters. I mean, you won't have every meter we need, but you've got basics that we need and that would save people money for having to buy the meters themselves. Yeah. It's and not know how to use them. Anyway. I think you said before, I probably have around 900 or more dollars worth of meters mm -hmm. um, because that's how serious this is for me. Um, it affects because there's nobody in that area doing this. Yeah. No one, no one in Pittsburgh. I think there might be one person in, in Erie PA, but I'm, I'm not even sure. I've never gotten a hold of them before. Oh yeah. There was, there's a person out there, but last time I heard it was pretty recently like that she was either ill or not doing it anymore or something. I don't know. That. Yeah. But yeah. I so, so if you guys have people call me because they called her and she wasn't. Okay. Know. Yeah. So yeah, um, I'm I'm more than happy. This is super fun for me to do, and mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's a it really is an amazing education. So yeah. Um, yeah. But all right, well, thank you so much for reminding Thanks me. For having that, me that, that was like something I really wanted to say too. So um, yeah. it's nice to see you again. Yeah, you as well, and uh, you hang on, um, everybody. Okay. Thank you so much for for watching, um, Lori and Kelly and Gina. We really appreciate your comments here, and uh, you guys all have a great day.